first met Trevor, he was severely underweight with a strange look of peace to him. He was admitted to our facility after turning himself in for a hit and run that took place over a year ago, resulting in the death of a young boy. While anorexia is more common in females than males, this case is special. It was brought on by extreme guilt and trauma. As can be seen quite often in anorexic cases, Mr. Resnick suffers from a very poor self-image, and he would report several times in a day, staring at himself in a mirror for long periods of time. Sometimes around midday, Trevor will get chatty. Often he'll talk about a man named Ivan. Whenever I ask him about meeting or finding Ivan, he just chuckles and says, Oh, don't worry. He's long gone by now. Oh, Ivan. Ivan isn't real. That is to say, he's a figment of Mr. Resnick's imagination, created through massive guilt and sleep deprivation. It's still a mystery to me why Ivan was manifested as a bald southern man with a deformed hand. I suppose the brain can do peculiar things under the right circumstances, but the other two figments, those of the boy and his mother, were actually spot on. They would appear to him as he'd stared off into the distance in a daze. To onlookers, I imagine he looked very much like a drug addict or a sickly homeless man. Trevor has several bad habits for someone in his condition. He smokes like a chimney, he drinks pots of coffee in a day, and before he came here he used to drink hard liquor almost every day. Yet somehow he is always as sharp as a tack. He will even spout off various legal cases and laws from time to time to the guards when he feels they are acting out of line. Resnick is incredibly intelligent in his own way. This may be part of the reason he stuck out like a sore thumb at the factory where he worked. In fact, towards the end of his time there, his co-workers became hostile towards him after he was held responsible for a fellow employee's severed and mangled arm. This is, of course, a type of accident not especially uncommon in factory work. Perhaps this was brought on by the hallucinations and accumulative fatigue. I can imagine those factors didn't help afterwards. This Ivan drove Mr. Resnick's suspicions and paranoia to the point of a mental implosion, so relentlessly until he was at the point of a psychological break. According to Resnick, the hallucinations of Ivan had him convinced that a conspiracy was in play to drive him insane. This is fairly common among individuals with paranoia, a belief that the world has gone insane rather than vice versa. Personally, I don't feel too comfortable working with you. You make me nervous. You look like shit, acting all crazy. What's up with you? Nothing's up with me. It was an accident. I'm the one who's got to live with it, aren't you? You ain't here any man. Nobody wants you here. Nobody. Eventually, Mr. Resnick started turning against everyone he had left in his life, real or imagined, until he became internally violent. This course of events, however, did lead him to recover memories of the hit and run. To this day, Trevor deals with recurring episodes of guilt is always abnormally obsessed with cleanliness around his cell. He even writes these little notes to himself that for the life of me I can't make heads or tails of. The 
guards say they often hear him screaming and whimpering in his sleep, but when he's awake he seems much more peaceful. Almost as if when he's awake he understands that he's repenting and that he belongs here. I honestly don't think he ever wants to leave. Mr. Resnick has already shown some signs that he's on a path to recovery. There have been no violent outbursts, no paranoid behaviors, no indication that his hallucinations are recurring. While he does report that he sometimes suffers from nightmares, even a restless sleep is an improvement on his previous situation. His behavior still needs to be monitored, and there's a long way to go before he can return to anything resembling a healthy lifestyle, but our most pressing concern right now is his physical state. Trevor never gets any visitors. I would have expected a guy as witty and bright as him to have at least a few. I guess it just goes to show how much he's lost with all these feelings of things that are going on. Maybe that's why he's trying. I guess he thinks fixing himself will help to fix all the things that went wrong. Given his circumstances, treatment for anorexia has proven difficult. He had no real social support system in place, and with his imprisonment, organizing meetings with any normal support group for anorexics has been complicated. Until we can work out the details with the appropriate authorities, we've arranged for a special diet and exercise regimen. And I'll be working closely with Mr. Resnick to educate him on what his condition and the treatments entail. He acts like he wants to be better again. He's been eating more, still not much, but more and he's sleeping as long as you'd expect anyone else to. It seems like, to me, it makes him feel normal, I think. Like he's where he needs to be. Still gonna need to record your statements. While Mr. Resnick doesn't exhibit most behavioral symptoms of anorexia, like obsession over his weight and vanity, the root of his condition is based in guilt, and to treat the anorexia, we must treat his guilt. To follow through, we also need to make sure he begins gradually eating more and more with each meal to bring him back to a more healthy body weight. With time, I believe Mr. Resnick will make a full recovery. Were anyone else, perhaps I would be more pessimistic. This has been a relentless chronic affliction for the past year and has taken a significant toll on his physical state. Mr. Resnick is an unusual case in that his own hallucinations led to understanding the source of the recent suffering, that guilt, and acknowledging that guilt has relieved a great deal of the emotional stress he was under. Mr. Resnick still displays many behaviors that we'll try to correct. He still compulsively cleans and writes notes to himself. He still has undeniable cravings for cigarettes and coffee. Yet despite this, in our many sessions, he's maintained an increasingly positive attitude towards both his current and future situations. And as long as he maintains this attitude, as long as he's willing to recognize his situation and accept assistance, I'm certain he'll continue to work towards recovery.